you could bow your head and close your eyes. As the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. We pray for your healing today, God, in families, in relationships, marriages. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, God. Holy Spirit, touch us today. Everything that we're learning goes to the purpose of this song to go on for generation after generation. That this message will be passed to our children, to our grandchildren, to our great grandchildren. I want to share something with you guys for a moment. You can look up if you can, if, if you're praying, and just continue going. But we were worshiping here a few minutes ago, and Pastor Gabriel just got a pro prophetic word for you guys right now. He said that he's seen us worshiping. We're in this building right now. We're worshiping. He said that the Holy Spirit showed him that there's walls, walls of separation, division that's been in our families for years. He says, Pastor Rob, as the worship goes into the song, as you guys begin to come up and share, the Holy Spirit revealed, and some of these walls have been here for years. Started maybe with your grandma, your grandpa, and he said, the Spirit of the Lord showed him, all these walls just came crashing down. Give the Lord a clap off for the praise, the worship. If you need walls to come down, begin to worship the Lord and say, thank you, God. Sing that song just one more time. When they sing this song right now, all the walls are coming crashing down. all across this auditorium if you're able to you're online welcome to one of our services we're so honored you tuned in with us god we thank you veronica can you pray seal that too that all the walls are coming down even as we're ministering now the walls are going to continue coming down release a blessing and a freedom veronica on everybody here and it's watching online lord we thank you lord Yes, we God. thank you that today, Lord, that walls are coming down. Yes. Walls that have been there for generations, Lord. We Lord, receive we it. We declare unity in the name of Jesus. We receive I pray it. Yes. And yes, I lose yes. unity right now in the yes. name of Jesus. We declare it. There will be no more division in these families, Lord. Division no more has division to go. Between a mother and daughter, a son and division a Division has to go from a our families. And a father. No, Lord. No more division. We thank you, Lord. Lord, Lord, as we get into today's word, Lord, yes. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to the hearts of the people, Lord. Yes, God. Speak to their hearts. Touch them, Lord. And I pray for just a life transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a clap off for he deserves all of our praise, honor, and glory. We come to worship him. Before you're seated, greet a few people. Say, man, it's so good to see you today. Say hi to someone. Give somebody a high five. And those online, Veronica, can you give a shout out to everybody watching online? Hello, for those of you that are watching online, so glad that you've joined us today. We got people watching now from all over the world, and we get reports from different states, people are watching. How many by show of hands, you've been with us for the last three weeks in a row for this challenge? 
Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you, thank you. Next week will be our last week on this topic. Um, when Emerson's going to be in town, it's going to be exciting. He has a great word for us. And also mass wedding next week. How many signed up for that? Is anybody in this service you signed up for that? Anybody in this service? I know we have, how many couples we have now, Mondo? Nine couples right now are going to be married. They're going to be on this stage. We're going to marry them all at once. Wow. You know what the coolest thing about that too? The wedding's free. How many spend a lot of money on their wedding? How much should we spend on our wedding? Do you have the numbers? Too much. We spent too much. <laughs> I mean, it was worth it. But, you thank know. Thank you. I, thank you. <laughs> She's all too much. But a lot of times, couples are going so extravagant, you know. And I'm like, you know what? Do you want to go on a honeymoon? Enjoy the honeymoon. Come back. Buy a house. You know. <laughs> hey, I, we went to a beautiful wedding yesterday. Oh, my Give goodness. it up for Jasmine and, and, and their husband. Beautiful. Uh, man, they got married. Some of our leaders. Beautiful. Oh, that was something out of a fairy tale, man. That was beautiful. Congratulations. Fairy tale. I think they're coming late. I, I think they're waiting until tomorrow to go on their honeymoon. But what a shout out. Great time yesterday with the wedding. But yeah. how many is excited about today, God's word? And if you have your notepads, you can get out your notepads if you can, or your phones, however you take notes. I think... The prophetic word that Gabriel just gave us right now, or not Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, it's right on. Right. What I wrote down, or what me and Veronica wrote down yesterday, last night, I'm going to say this. We don't know what kind of conflict that you're in right now. I don't know what you're facing in your relationships. There might be a married couple here. Um, you've already filed for divorce. I don't know where you're at. Me and Veronica, we don't know where you're at. Maybe your circle of influence, they know your story. Maybe you're going through a tough time in your marriage. Not only in marriage, maybe relationship with mom and son. Mom and daughter. Siblings, maybe you're not talking to a brother. You're not talking to a sister. We are here to declare restoration today. We serve a God of restoration. Can you give a shout to Jesus? That's what he does. I want you to write down the title for today. Write this down or, or type it in there in your phone. Veronica, what is um, today's title? What are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about how to resolve conflict and restore relationships. How many know we have conflict in relationships? How many know when you got married, you married like the complete opposite? <laughs> right? There's conflicts in relationships at, at our job site, with our family, with our siblings. There's conflict. And we have to be able to get the skill. Someone say skill. Yeah. It's a skill to have good relationships. So how to resolve conflict, how to restore. And the declaration over your life uh, today that, that restoration is coming to your family. That freedom is coming to your family. Veronica, can you read Joel? If you have your Bibles, turn to Joel chapter 2, 25, 26. This is a declaration right now over your family that freedom is going to hit your family today. It says, the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, the cutting locust. Yes. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Once again, you will have all the food you want. Yes. And you will praise the Lord your God who, go, who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. That prophetic word, Gabriel, there, I already had this scripture. Things that you have lost in the last few years or years in relationships, God is going to restore right now. He's going to restore your family. Here's another declaration for your family. First Peter, Veronica, can you read that? First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Receive this. Receive these scriptures right now for your family. It says, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Yes. So after you have suffered a little while. Stop right there. How many has been going through some suffering in family? or relationships if you have suffered for a little while what is God going to do he will restore can I get an amen give the Lord a big shout of praise look at your neighbor and tell them he's going to restore your family tell them he's going to restore your relationships that's what God does continue to read it honey I love it he will restore support and strengthen you and he will place you on a firm foundation 
How many received that for their families today? Online, you received that. Just give, give a shout out right there in your living room. Jesus is good. He's here to restore. I love it. Me and Veronica now, we've been married going on 20 years. Go ahead. Bra uh, no, I can't brag about you. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> give me a kiss. I love you. Sorry, this might be PG-13 if you got kids in there. Just, I'm in love with my happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Give it up for the moms in this place. But Veronica, you know, talking about conflict, we have dealt with conflict in our, in our marriage. We've dealt with some things. And um, God is in the business of restoring. He's in the business of, uh, of rebuilding families. And so I want to answer this question. I want you to write this down. Why is resolving conflict and restoring relationships so important? You might be saying, why do we have to restore why do I got to make this relationship work? Why do I need to make this relationship work at my job, with my mom, with my spouse, with my brother, with my sister, with my kids? What, why do we need to, to have this restoration? Why do we need for God to restore this conflict? And before we do that, yeah, can you define conflict? Yeah, let's do that. For us military-minded people, we might think conflict is like physical and warfare and, and guns and violence, right? Yeah. But conflict is a serious disagreement or argument. It also means to be in contradictory. Yeah. To fail to be in agreement. So basically, plain and simple, it's fail to be in agreement. That's it. And the enemy, he moves in disagreement. That's why he wants us to be disunified. Right. Disunified with our spouse, disunified with our children, disunified with leaders. Desolation comes every time division is there. Desolation, destruction comes when we're disunified. So why is it so important? Number one, why should we resolve conflict? Why should we restore relationships? Well, because the majority of us will get married and the majority of our marriages will end in divorce because Ooh. we don't know how to resolve conflict. Why do we have to work on this? The majority, of the majority of people are going to get married. How many singles want to get married? Where are my singles at? Give me a shout out. Singles, where are you at? How many want to get married? All right, all right. Most Americans, we're going to get married. We'll go through some stats. But the sad thing is, most people will also go through a divorce. If divorce is the goal... This is a kind of a heavy statement. If, the, if divorce is the goal, we are succeeding in America. If divorce is the goal, we're succeeding right now in America. Can you read some of the stats on how many people will get married, divorce? Okay, 69% of men and 76% of women will be married at least once. Today, 61.5%. 2 million people are married in the U.S. There you go. Um, in the United States, there's a divorce approximately every 36 seconds. That is crazy. I don't know if we've done this yet. I, I just want to... Can we declare over the couples right now? Yes. If you're married, can you stand up really quick? Because that's a prophetic word that, that, that the Holy Spirit gave, gave Gabriel. These walls are coming down, honey. These stats now, they don't relate to you and I any longer. We break the spirit of divorce in the name of Jesus and separation. Dad was divorced. Maybe someone's in their second marriage. We just come against the plans of the enemy. The conflict is done in Jesus' name. Unity is coming to your marriage. I declare unity in your marriage right now. Unification right now in your marriage. We break every tactic and assignment of the devil over your family, over your marriage. In the name of Jesus, you will be a blessing to one another. You will be a blessing to society. You will be a blessing to this church. You will be a blessing in the community. You will be a blessing in your job we declare right now freedom over mar every married couple right now in the name of Jesus give the Lord a big shout of praise right now walls come down 
You can be seated. Walls, come down. Pray for the singles right now, for freedom for our singles right now. Freedom right now. They will marry the right person. And God, they will have a successful marriage in the name of Jesus. Somebody who's dating somebody right now that's not from God. Break up that relationship, God. Break it up. If there's a relationship that's not of you, God, break it up right now, Lord. We want your will to be done with the singles right now. Bless the singles. I love it, man. God is moving. That was such a great prophetic word, Gabriel. Thank you for sharing that. The walls, just, I just see walls continue to come down. This is powerful. Wow. Sorry, honey. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, go ahead and read some more stats. Or... Some more stats. 53% uh, of first marriages end in, in divorce. divorce. 67% of second marriages and a divorce, and 74 of third marriages and a divorce. So if you listen to those stats, you'll see they begin to increase. They go higher and higher. Why does it increase? The reason that the divorce rate rises in the second and third marriage, we haven't changed yet. Right. In order to see a difference, we need to change. Right. And how do, how do you know that change comes from God? It comes from the Holy Spirit. We don't do it on our own. It comes from God. But that's why the numbers continue to go up. Right. So it also says, we wrote here, or we have here, um, divorce only happens after our hearts have been hardened through unresolved conflict. That's it. Matthew 19, 8 says, Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts. But it was not what God had That's originally it. intended. Divorce only happens when our hearts are so hard because of unresolved conflict. That's why today we just could learn a little bit how to resolve conflict. So again, we're answering a question. Why is resolving conflict and restoring relationships so important? Number one, the majority of us will get married. And the majority of our marriages will end in divorce, but not anymore in this ministry. Not anymore in the body of Christ. Here's number two, why we need to do What is number two, honey? Number two is we can distort the way people see God. Why do we got to make this happen? Why do I got to resolve these relationships? If we're not careful, we can distort the image of God to people. See, the only way people are going to see God is through our relationships. They will know that we are God's disciples, and I'm getting ahead of myself, because of our love for one another. So let me just give you a quick example, because if you're not sure, how can that distort what, how people see yeah. God? So say, for instance, uh, I have a coworker, Okay. Um, I work somewhere other than church, but I have a coworker, and um, my coworker is a, a, f a family girl, and they hang out all weekend, and they look forward to their weekends together, and they have all the little toys that they need as far as like um, boats and the sea dews and all the all the little gadgets so they can go out for a weekend and have a great time, right? Right. And spend time with family. And she always talks about spending time with family wow. and how she loves her husband. Yeah. And I'm a believer, and me and my husband can't get along for the life of us. Wow. I'm always coming in, I'm always complaining about him, I'm always telling her, oh, you know what he did today, or you know what he said this morning, or you know what he didn't do. You don't do that, do you? No, I don't. Okay, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. I was getting scared for a second, sorry. Keep on going. But Sorry. I, as a believer, can't get along in wow. my relationship, yeah. in my marriage with my husband. Right. And then God opens a door for me to speak to them and invite them to church and meet my Jesus. They're going to be like, I don't want your Jesus. I see. Your Jesus can't help you. Wow. Wow. That is how, the, the, um, yeah. how they can distort how they see God. I love that. And the scripture that I read, or, 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 or the scripture I quoted earlier, this is John 13, 35. Your love for one another, not your preaching to them all day. Not your preaching. Let me show you this scripture. Hey, do you know this? Your love for one another will prove. What will it do? It will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You will prove to the world 
You're my disciples, how you love one another. How many want to point people to Jesus? Our relationships, our marriages should be pointing people to God. The ultimate thing that I want to do, I want people to see God. And how do they see God? What is one of the ways? It's through our love for one another. Yes. So when I want to go off on her in the middle of Stater Brothers, I can't go off. <laughs> because people are watching. And it's something you shared. I don't, it's not on the notes. You had it yesterday. We, we couldn't put everything on here. The Tasmanian Devil. devil. Oh. <laughs> See, this, how many of you have ever seen that cartoon, The Tasmanian Devil? He's like... <laughs> Maybe next service we'll have it on. Just, Tasmanian, just run and create. This is what happens. We could, be in a, we, we could fall in deception. Mm-hmm. We could think, for spouses for a minute, we could think that if, if I'm in conflict here, I can have good relationships at the job. No. It's not going to happen. Because everywhere we go, we take that same mindset with us. Right. We, take that bit, we take that bitterness in the business room. We take that bitterness at the family reunion. We take that bitterness at mama's house later at the barbecue. Right. Because when one relationship is off, all the other ones will start to be off. And God is saying, if you want people to see me, love each other properly. I love, that was a great example you gave. Why did we take it out? I don't know why we take it out. I don't don't know. know. (laughs) Okay. Number three. So. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Number three. Okay. Number three. Go ahead, sweetie. Um, why resolving conflict and restoring relationships. So what was number one? What was number one? Why should we resolve conflict? What's number one? Now we can see who's taking notes, yeah, see? Yeah. I see, I told you sometimes some people are, some people are, I don't know. That happens. <laughs> What's number one? <laughs> what Pastor Robert okay, said 15 right, minutes ago, good, okay. Okay. okay? What is number two? There you go. And what is number three? Why should we restore these relationships or conflict? You ready? Our children will follow in our footsteps. That's, whew. That's like the biggest one for me. Um, not biggest one. The biggest one is to point people to God. There's nothing bigger than that. Nothing bigger than that. Secondly is this one for me. It's for our kids. I like the statement that you, and we probably heard it, but I want you, can you say that statement again? It's a good statement to repeat. Okay. So our kids won't do what we say. They're going to do what we do. How many want their kids to have successful relationships? How many want their kids to serve God? That's my greatest thing. You know, we have three kids. We have, maybe show a picture next service, but my daughter Mariah, she's um, 17. And right now as we speak, probably, she's leading worship right now with the teenagers over here. Uh, my, My son, my son Noah, he's 13. And the most sensitive boy for the Holy Ghost, like, it's kind of tough for me because I'm a man's man. Right? I'm a Puerto Rican. We're ready. Don't cry. Don't do it. You know, sometimes. Sometimes it'll come out of me, right? And sometimes I'll just see Noah crying off to the corner. What's he doing? What's he crying? Tell him to quit crying. Right? And, but he's sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yes. I'll say something a little harsh. He goes, man, dad, you shouldn't have said that. That person feels, that person feels bad. He'll correct in a minute. That wasn't nice. He's like, that wasn't nice. That wasn't nice to mommy. Our kids are looking at us. Yeah. And if we want this love of God to, f- to follow and for our kids to inherit it, they need to see it at home. And if we're not careful, we could almost kind of take away their faith from God. If God is real, how come mom and dad can't get along? Right. They go to church every week. Why are they cussing each other out? Why is this happening to kids? If we're not careful, that's the most dangerous part. Our kids can even lose their faith. Write that down. If we don't work on these conflicts, our kids could lose. That's not part of the notes. Our kids could lose their faith. Their faith in God, faith in Christianity, faith in the church, faith in everybody. There's our kids. Does Mariah look like I'm Veronica? You got a great compliment. Yesterday went went to a wedding and they thought I was walking with Mariah the whole time. <laughs> you guys are twins. You guys are identical. 
And with her, you got her foster daughter, Jazzy? Don't forget Jazzy. I'll we'll put her up next service, foster daughter. So go ahead, sweetie. I'm losing track, man. Okay. Sorry. I'm having too much fun. So really, us as parents, our number one respons responsibility... Oh, there they go. There is our foster daughter. <laughs> we just took her in about a year ago now. Yes. She was part of our youth group and... She's on fire, too. She helps with the discipleship. Um, Maya trained her, and so she does all the discipleship, uh, yeah. helps with the discipleship, di discipleship lessons yeah. for the youth group. I walked into the room, and she was creating stuff, and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm creating stuff for discipleship, Robert. Yeah. I'm a discipleship leader. Yeah. I disciple people. <laughs> so I work on this, and we work on relationships so it could pass on to these little ones. You guys getting it? Go ahead, sweetie. Our number one responsibility yeah. as parents is to exemplify Jesus. I love that. Our number one responsibility as parents is to exemplify Christ. Right. 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So our kids should be able to follow our example because we're following Christ. So we gave you the reasons on why we need to work it out. We work it out for our kids. We work it out because the majority of us will get married. We work it out because we don't want to distort the image of God to the world. But now, how do we resolve it? Let's give them some tools. I know we could be here for 10 hours. We'll give you like three tools. How do we now resolve this conflict? How do we restore relationships? Ron, can you okay, so kick us off with, on that? With step number one. And I'll be honest with you, this is not my strong point, okay? It isn't, it isn't. It, oh, well, thanks. You're getting better, though. <laughs> I'm getting better. You're getting better. So, so what it is, is uh, no, step number one is make the first move. Ooh. Okay? Tell somebody, make the first move. So the person who's most mature, loving. That's you, you're the most humble, mature. Humble, unselfish. Spiritual ways make the first move. Resolving conflict and restoring relationships must be intentional. One of our leaders, Gary Hornsby, um, called Pastor Marco this morning, and he said, you know what, what, what was the purpose of marriage? And he texts Pastor Marco this morning, right? One of our leaders, you know what was the purpose of marriage? And Marco's like, Pastor Marco's like, what? He goes, to kill selfishness. Oh. Isn't that good? It's true, though. That's true. Have I died these last 20 years? Yes, you have. I have? Have I? Um, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Did you hear the hesitation? That is not right. <laughs> to make this work, man, we got to die to selfishness. Note, the faster we deal with conflict, the healthier our relationships will be. Right. Faster. Deal with it fast. Don't let it fester. Right. What happens Make the is, first move. is if you just let it sit there, it's, it's like a cancer. Oh, it'll spread. And it'll just start to spread. Deal with it fast. You got to beef with your wife, someone in the church at, at your job. Deal with it quick. It will turn into a cancer. It'll turn into it, destroy everything around you. Deal with it. Is it awkward? Yes. How many know it's awkward to say, I'm sorry, first? Anybody with me? Some of us have to go through an exorcism just to say sorry. <laughs> Every demon out of hell is because I'm sorry. I'm I have sorry. actually when I'm, I'm going to. It's tough I'm not to say you, that. I'm it's not gonna, tough. Wait, wait, hold on. No, no, it's tough to say it when you know she's wrong and you're right. I shouldn't have said that. Wait, that didn't come rare. out. That's rare. That didn't come out right. Shouldn't have Good. said that. <laughs> but it's hard when you know when that person is like 99% wrong. Right. And you say sorry anyways. Am I get myself in trouble up here? I don't even know no, what I'm saying. Good. All right. You're good. <laughs> right? Here's, here's another good statement. Reconciliation is a verb that requires immediate action. Did you say immediate? Immediate. Can't wait till tomorrow. Can't wait a half an hour. Can't wait an hour. You can't wait until right. in the morning. Get right before you go to bed. You got to do it fast, immediately. So a lot of times what we do is we don't address it immediately. Right. We think that, ah, oh, it'll just go away or time will take care of it. Uh -uh. But if I do that, it sits in my heart. That's right. And it just begins to grow. That's where that bitterness like settles in. And yeah. So it has to be dealt with immediately. immediately. Make the first move. Go to your spouse. Go to that person you got beef with. Some of us today, you're not talking to a brother or a sister. Can you text them today? They're still alive. Text them. 
Say, hey, bro, I was just thinking about you today. I just want to say sorry for what's happened the last few years with us. Will, will you forgive me, bro? Will you forgive me, sister? Will you forgive me, mom? Will you forgive me, dad? I love that. Because it's already care. Now, with Jesus, this is serious business. Right. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. With Jesus, reconciliation, the Bible calls, reconciliation is our ministry. That's what we do. We reconcile. We reconcile people back to God and we reconcile relationships. But look how Jesus puts it in Matthew, tw Matthew chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Look what he says about having beef with somebody, going to church and doing things. Look what, how he responds. Can you read that? You want me to read it? Okay. So if you, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Wow. Leave your gift there Leave before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Rec reconciliation takes priority over your ministry, over everything. Yes. God is literally saying, bring in a gift. It could be your talent, your finances. You got a gift to, to do this and do that. God says, right. you're walking into the church and you have beef with somebody. I'd rather you leave the church for a little bit and go work it out with that brother. I don't want nobody walking out right now. <laughs> I see a lady walking out. Don't walk out. Don't walk out. Don't walk out. <laughs> But that's how serious God sees it. I could be offering my finances. And God is saying, I don't honor those finances. Because you just screamed at your wife last night and you didn't make up. The offering you're bringing, I don't honor it. That gift of teaching that you just taught a class that week, that's like a clashing symbol to me. I don't even accept that. Leave that, leave that teaching and go make it right with that person do you see the heaviness of this the bible says make love your highest goal make relationships and love your highest goal i love that so reconciliation is a verb and we got to do immediate action so step number two what was step number one who's taking notes what was number one oh, i got it Who's ready to make the first move? How many is going to say sorry today to someone? Okay, how many needs to text somebody today? You got beef with somebody. You need to text someone today. Go for it, man. It'll change your life. It'll change it. What's number two, honey? Step number two is take responsibility. Love it. Take responsibility. If you're going to, if you and I are going to resolve conflict, we got to take responsibility. This was my fault. This is what I did in the relationship that wasn't right. I, I make the first move. I'm sorry. I take responsibility on what's going on right now. I take responsibility of this. Okay, so we don't start with, and actually, this is probably your weaker one. Oh, and I gotta say my weaker one. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm open. I'm open. I want to change, honey. I want to change. I want to love you better. I don't take responsibility. Wait, hold on. He has, don't put me on blast. You guys will finish it now. Has, don't put me on blast with a thousand people and just, just. He'll be like, oh yeah, but he does take responsibility, but then he doesn't. It's, it's weird. Kind of strange. You have counseling Monday night, so I'll call counseling. I think, I think we Monday. should have this conversation. Mondo said he could take stories. me in his class okay, and he yeah, counseling yeah. Let's Monday nights. <laughs> I'll be at your class, Mondo. So take responsibility. We don't start with we don't start with what they did wrong. Oh, I like that. We start with what we did wrong. Oh, say that again. That's a good statement. Okay, I like we that. Don't, I don't start with what he did wrong. I start with what I did wrong. See, starting with our part in the conflicts. Helps them receive, open up, and let, let their walls down. down. If we're just pointing the fingers at people all day long, you did this, and you did that, and you did this, and you did that, they're never going to open up. They're never going to get the healing that God needs. So Jesus instructs us to start with our own shortcomings before we address theirs. Oh. In Matthew 7, 3 through 5. How many have shortcomings? I okay, that should be all of us. This How is many? where we take responsibility. We all have them. <laughs> Let's do it. We all got shortcomings. What are some of, what are some of my shortcomings so I could work on them? 
Let's do it. Wasn't wa- that a horrible I question get to healed. ask? Him? I want to get healed. <laughs> I, I'm not here just to do a little talk. I want heal. How many want healing? I don't want to wait. What, what do I got to work on? What do you have to work on? Yeah, tell me. Let's oh, do it. Oh, you put me on the spot. Just do it. Let's if share. you'd had me I want prepare freedom. ahead of time, I probably could have wrote a whole list, but. <laughs> Every time Pastor Marco asks me to do this, I get terrified. Because <laughs> she's just black. Go I'm ahead. This kidding. is your opportunity. Is there no, one? No, no, seriously. What's I'm one? Is there, any? is there, is there any? any? Yeah. Let me think. Oh, there is one that comes to mind. Go ahead. I want freedom. I want it because I got to go to Mondo's class now on okay, Monday. Okay, so then we'll just talk about Mondo, yes- here it goes. We'll just talk about yesterday's events. Okay. Very crazy, busy week. Yesterday, we're getting ready for the wedding. Uh, we woke up early. We've been trying to get studying in all week, just a little bit here, just a little bit there, just a little bit here. And yesterday morning, we woke up early. Okay. Okay. Went over the notes. He's scared. He's scared. He is scared. Okay. So went over the see, notes. See, if you want freedom. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, you got to open up. Someone told me the other day, I don't want people to know my business. I said, that's, that's not a good statement. You'll never get freedom. Right. That's true. The truth will set you free. Okay, go ahead. I don't know where you're going so, with this, but go ahead. He really doesn't know because he has, I didn't this say anything about it. This is not on our notes. It's not on it. That's why. To say. This is so, not on the notes. So we are, um, now it's time to get ready for the wedding. He is officiating the wedding. Okay. We have to be there. We have to leave here by, what'd you tell me? 145. One, 145. 145, Veronica. I the wedding's at three. We've got to be there about 215 in right. Redlands. Okay. I'm like, okay, I got to do this. I pull out my dress. My dress is wrinkled. I have to iron it. I tried steaming it first. Didn't work. I pulled out the iron. I tried to iron it, and the pleats were all weird, and it was just like crazy madhouse in the room, Tasmanian devil, right? Why do ladies take so long to get ready? <laughs> okay. Okay, go, 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 There go, you go. go. go, go, go. He comes in. He puts his suit on, and then he begins pacing back and forth. How many back guys do that waiting for your wife? It's like, dude. Literally, in my mind, I was like, and get out of the up. room. I, get I, out. I, you the, stay, are you the, come on. I'm like, are you saying I'm, I told him, you standing there isn't going to make me move any faster. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm like moving stuff around the room, not to, you know. To... But this is it, ladies, right here. Okay, what is it? What do I, okay, okay, so, what, are, what are we talking so about? So he's pacing. Oh, I got to take responsibility, okay. He's pacing back and forth. Right? Pacing yeah. back and forth. For what? Maybe half hour, 45 minutes. You got a mom over here who said, preach it, pastor. Oh, right here. Okay, go ahead. And <laughs> I remember, oh my goodness, I left the clothes in the, in the washer. Okay. And those clothes need to be hung. And who hangs the clothes? Me, right? I said, babe, could you do me a favor? Run downstairs um, to the washer and pull out the wet clothes. He says, okay. He goes downstairs. <laughs> he comes back up. He's all, did you say the wet clothes? I said, yes. Washer, wet clothes. I'm like, why do you want the wet clothes up here? They go I in said, a dryer. I said, they need to be hung up. I told him they need to be hung up. He comes up. He's all, here they are. And he walks away and continues to pace back and forth. <laughs> She didn't say bring up the wet clothes and hang them. So there. Being more considerate of each other. Seeing what what areas we need help in. All right. I take responsibility. (laughs) In front of the... He asked for it. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. In front of the thousand people. (laughs) I take responsibility. You're right. I should have hung those clothes. I shouldn't have threw them on there. I'm sorry. Next time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's like, what am I getting myself into? Next time you ask me to do that, I'll hang up the clothes. When I know you're busy, I'll take responsibility. Sounds amazing. Thank you. I love you and I forgive you. Whew. I'm free now, ladies. See? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jesus instructs us to start with our... <laughs> Jesus instructs us to start with our own shortcomings before we address theirs. 
I love this scripture. Matthew 7, 3 through 5. It's hilarious and right to the point and funny. Matthew chapter 7, 3 through 5. Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye? Why do you look at the splinter in your spouse's eye? Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, your sister, your, your, your boss? But don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye. We can find fault in everybody. And we got this big old beam. Or how can you say to your brother, hey, let me take that little splinter out of your eye. And look, there's a beam of wood in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the beam out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Let's deal with our shortcomings first. Take responsibility. Honey, for time, we got one more and that's yeah, it. Eh? one more. We could be here for 10. How many is enjoying this? You guys enjoying this today? You guys getting it? We got to go to the last one. Maybe 11 o'clock we'll share more, but I want to respect you guys. How many got barbecues? Anybody got barbecues? Anybody doing ribs today? For mother? You doing ribs for Mother's Day? Is that what Mama wants? She likes Daddy ribs. <laughs> okay, you're not doing. You're not doing women. How many women are doing nothing today? You're just like. Woo! Hope you got somebody taking care of you today. He's taking care of you. All right, cool. So number three, what's number three, honest? We could number go eat some barbecue today. Number three is, is forgive. Now, what question are we answering? How do we resolve conflict? Mm -hmm. So the last one, we need to forgive. Forgiveness That's awesome. is the ultimate reset button. I love this. Write this down. Right. Put it on your phone. Forgiveness is the ultimate reset button and conflict solver. Forgiveness is not optional. We don't have an option not to forgive our spouse. We don't have an option not to forgive our co-worker. We don't have an option not to forgive our brother's sister. We don't have an option. We cannot resolve conflict and reconcile relationships without forgiveness. Why don't we have an option? Honey, can you read the last scripture? Colossians 3.13 says, Be gentle and ready to forgive. Love it. Never hold grudges. Let it go. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. There's another scripture that says that if you don't forgive others, yeah, the Lord can't forgive, won't forgive you. So we can literally go like this. Lord, forgive me. God is saying, no, I can't. You got to forgive your brother first. Got to forgive your spouse first. Forgive me, God, I sinned today. Can't forgive you today. You got to make that relationship right. So today I want everyone to stand up. If you can, just don't leave. Just give us a few more minutes because we're going to pray for people right now. We want to open up the front section for prayer, for healing. How many got something from the Lord today, from the Holy Spirit? You got something today? I hope you receive something today. Just a little nuggets of how to deal with conflict. If those who watch it online, you can join us as well. If you're there in your living room, you're at a watch party, you can stand in your living room if you can. If you're listening, maybe on YouTube or something, you're traveling, we invite you into this moment as well to get some healing and salvation. Me and Veronica, we don't know what's happening in your marriage. We don't know what's happening in your relationships right now. But all of us, a lot of us, we're going through some things in relationships. There's bickering in the family. Nobody's talking to one another. And God is saying the walls, they're coming down. So let's handle that one first. If you're saying, Pastor, my marriage right now, let's, let's deal with marriage for a second. I'm married. We have, some, we have some conflict. Something came up. It could be adultery. I know we're laughing, we're having a good time, and we should in the house of God. But I know some of you guys are hurting. You just found out your husband is cheating on you. You just found out your wife is cheating on you. You just got this news. It's, it's heartbreaking. It's heart-wrenching. You don't know what to do. You just found out something about your kid. And you're like, man, what, what's the family going to do? Or, man, I, I need some work with my relationship. They're, they're, some of them are shattered. I don't talk to this person. I don't talk to that person. And my relationships, they need, they need a miracle. I just want those walls to come down. If you're a married couple right now, first married couple, and you need help right now in your marriage, you need someone just to agree, 
I want you to come on down, right? That's the first one. Married couples, if you need special prayer, just come on down. If you're single, if you're single and you're having relationship problems and you're, you're facing some things and you're not talking to that person, there's been some conflict, singles, and you're dealing with things, come on down. If you're in this room today, yeah, come on down. Married couples, singles. Yes. You're a single, you're dating someone or courting. You're not 100% sure this is your wife, this is your husband. You're, you're not sure. Talk to somebody. Make that first move. Say, hey, these are my concerns. We have great counselors here, people up here that can help you and talk it. Just talk it out with you and see how we can help you. So yeah, married couples come, singles now. Here's the last thing. And not the last thing. If in a moment when I'm done praying, if you need prayer about anything, you got a bad report from the doctor, you're hurting today. Finance problems. You're in the middle of jobs right now and, and it's kind of unclear. Where is it? Where's our career going from here? Anything. In a moment, anything you're going through, before you leave, come up. We want to pray with you. But here's the last thing as we close. Me and Veronica, our team, our leaders, our pastors, we want to make sure that you're on your way to heaven. We want to make sure that you're right with God. Let me ask you a question. If you were to die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? I'm going to say that again. If you were to die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? So pastor, I thought everybody just goes to heaven. That's not the case. There's a real heaven, a real hell. All those who do not have the Son, all those who do not have Jesus, they don't have eternal life. They don't go to heaven. All those who have the Son, all those who have received Jesus, they have eternal life. Simply meaning this, if you have put your faith in Jesus, you're going to heaven. If you haven't made that declaration yet, this is your day. If you want to be forgiven of all your sins, if you want to get right with God today, if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, if you want to make sure you died today, that you would go straight to heaven. I mean, that's me. I'm not right with God. I need God. I'm a backslider. I'm coming back to God today. Oh man, I, I want God to forgive me of my sins. I need to make peace with God today. That's me. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up when I count to three. What are you raising your hands? You're saying, I want God. I want Jesus to forgive me of all my sins. Man, I want to place my faith in God. If I were to die today, I want to get right with God. That's me. That's me. On the count of three, all across this auditorium and those watching online, when I say the number three, lift up your hand. This is your day. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's right now. Get ready. When I say three, raise your hands. One. If you want Jesus, you want to be forgiven, you want to be a follower of God, raise your hands when I say three, one, two, three, raise your hands right now, raise them, raise them, raise them, I see a couple hands over there, I think I see a hand right there, good job, I see a hand over here, I see a hand there, I see a hand there, I see a little one even right there, child, I see a hand there, I see a hand there, hand there, hand there, yeah, I see a hand, take a couple hands over here. All those that just raised your hands and you're still at the seat, you're still, I want you to come down. We're going to pray with you right now to lead you in a prayer of salvation. Those that are up here, we're going to lead you. Come on down. Come on down. Come. This is your day. Come, come, come. We're going to wait for you. Come. Come, come, come. Yeah. So proud of you, sir. Your daughter was like this. Your daughter was like, yeah. I love that. She was over in the back, like right here. I love it. Another family up here. Oh, this is beautiful. Wow. Another couple coming over here. Then we got two more guys coming up here. Come. We're waiting for you guys. We're waiting. Come. 
I love to see families coming up. Isn't that beautiful? Got a whole family over here getting saved. Man. Another family. Come, come, come on, you guys. Give a round of applause. Got another one coming here, yeah. Sorry, guys, we can't rush this time. I know we get, I know we got things to do. Like we can't rush. We got another one just came up here. Two more coming up right here. Look at this. Two more right here. Yeah. Every head bow, if we can. Is anybody coming down? Yeah. Every head bow, every eyes closed. If you're at your seat right now, you're saying, "Man, how come I didn't go down there? What am I doing? I know I'm not right with God." I know it. It's okay. Join us in this prayer. Say it with us. You're at your seat right there. You're watching us online. Say it with us. God will touch you right there at your seat. But don't miss this opportunity. Hands might be sweating. Heartbeats just got to... Don't miss it. Join us. Every head by every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, I thank you for dying on a cross for me. I give my life to you. I surrender. Set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions. Jesus, today, I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for my new start. Today, I'm saved. I repent of all the wrong that I've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How many said that prayer today? Welcome, welcome to the family of God. If you're here in the front, hang out for a few minutes with us. We want to exchange information, pray with you guys. We love you. All the moms, happy Mother's Day. I pray that you just have a great day with your family today and friends. Those watching online, you got saved. Go to igotsaved.com. We love you. Pastor Marco will be preaching Wednesday. He's actually getting ready to preach at our Pomona camp. Campus. He was here earlier. He's going to be preaching at Pomona at 11 o'clock. We love you guys. Have a great Mother's Day. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. Love to pray with you. If God is for you.